Hey guys, my name is Kirsty and welcome to another video. So today I am going to be showing you or telling you rather my May wrap up. Oh my life, this piece of hair is really annoying me. Oh, it's times like this where I wish I could just cut my hair off. Kind of a couple of more elements to the blog post version such as books that I'm currently reading, the TV shows that I watched or films that I watched in May and also a life update. So for any of you nosy people out there that want to know the nitty gritty details of my personal life then there's like a very short paragraph in the blog post. In May, I read a total of nine books. Three of them were graphic novels, but it's okay. I still count graphic novels towards my reading challenge because I am still reading. So the first two books that I read in May were Graceling by Kristen Cashore and Fire by Kristen Cashore and these are books one and two in the Graceling Realms trilogy. Fire is actually a companion novel to Graceling. It, it has one of the same character as Graceling and I gave Graceling a 4.5 five out of five I think and then I gave fire a 3.75 out of five I know like a lot of people seem to enjoy fire better than Graceling but for me because I listened to both of these books on audiobook for me fire just didn't really capture my attention as much as Graceling did and I'm currently reading or listening to Bitter Blue as well which is the third book in the Graceling Realms trilogy and Bitter Blue has really just captured my attention whereas fire just I don't know what it was it just I wasn't as intrigued within that kind of world and that story as I was with Graceling. But to talk about these books separately, Graceling is about this girl called Katza and she is a Graceling which means that when she was born she has a, I, I don't know how to like explain it without word, using the word grace, she has an affinity. There's different graces throughout like the Graceling realm so people can have a grace for singing which means they excel at singing. Some people can have a grace for fighting or mind reading or changing someone's thoughts or healing you get the idea Katza's grace is survival so at first you think that her grace is actually fighting or killing but it turns out that it's actually survival and this is a beautiful story I loved the character development that happened throughout this book I loved the romance. It was an insta love, which made me so happy. It was a slow build up between Katza and Prince Poe, and they learned to trust one another, and it was just a beautiful romance to read about. And it's just, I ship them very, very hard. And it was nice to see at the end of the book that Katza was teaching women how to fight and that just made me very happy and Graceling is narrated on audiobook by Emma Powell who actually does a very very good job of narrating the story. I love this world so much and I think it's actually going to be a reread for me in the future where I actually like want to physically read the books instead of listen to it on audiobook. And then obviously Fire I did give a slightly lower rating but that's just because I wasn't as intrigued into the world as I was with Graceling. But Fire is about a young woman called Fire who is a monster. Now I don't mean a monster in the kind of scary, you know, horrible meaning of the word. A monster in the Delian place in the Graceling realm is that there are people who are classed as monsters who have kind of bright hair and are exquisitely beautiful and there are monster birds that have like, I don't know, bright orange fur and dogs that have bright blue fur. It's just, yeah, they're called monsters but fire is just exquisitely beautiful and anyone who meets her is just automatically attracted to her in the romantic 
and the sexual way and but also in the way where they just feel a connection with her so it's not all romantic but basically she is dealing with a father who is very controlling and abusive and has just ruined basically the city where she lives and it's about her trying to figure out a way through that whilst also making friends with loads of people. There's a bit of romance thrown in, there's fighting. So yeah, this was a good book, not as enjoyable as Graceling because I didn't connect with the character as fire as much as I did with Katza, but it is still a very enjoyable book. And the third book, which is Bitter Blue, is actually a sequel to Graceling. So it's not a companion novel, it's a sequel that's set 10 years after. But obviously I will be talking about that in my June wrap up. Then I read The Wicked Deep by Shia Earnshaw and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 or a 3 out of 5, I'm not 100% sure yet. But this is a book about these three sisters. They came to this town called Sparrow and they were accused of being witches so they were drowned. And then we move on to present day and there's this kind of thing that happens in the town of Sparrow where every summer the three sisters, their spirits, inhabit the bodies of three girls in the town of Sparrow. And using the bodies of these three girls, they kill men. So they lure the boys into the water and kill them for revenge on the town of Sparrow for drowning them. So that's in like technically what this book is about but we do follow the character of Penny who is part of this you know town she lives in Sparrow and this whole book focuses around a summer where these drownings are happening and it's about Penny trying to find out which girls the spirits are inhabiting, which boys are going to be killed, there's romance involved with a boy called Bo and just her and her friends are trying to figure out who's going to die, who's being possessed by the spirits and just yeah. So it was very intriguing. There are a few plot twists that I did see coming hence the kind of lower rating because I did find it quite, what's the word, predictable. There we go. I found it a little bit predictable but it was still an enjoyable read overall. It's only a short book as well. It's just under 300 pages. It's 298. So I literally read this book in two and a half hours. If you're looking for a mystery contemporary novel with hints of magical realism then definitely go for this book. Then I read another series and this is Nemesis by Brendan Rikes and Genesis by Brendan Rikes and I was actually sent Genesis by the publisher from Pam Macmillan so thank you to Pam Macmillan for sending me this book to review. I was sent this book unsolicited by Pam Macmillan so I didn't ask to receive this book they just asked me and I was like yeah sure and so I received it but basically Nemesis was a reread for me. I read it last year I think and um, because obviously I was being sent Genesis I couldn't really remember what happened in Nemesis so I decided to give it a reread and I am so glad that I did. This book was just even better the second time around. I just gave it a solid 5 out of 5 stars. Nemesis is basically just about government secrets so it's a dystopian novel I guess and it's basically about the world going to shit. That's just basically what it is. There's, you know, tsunamis and earthquakes and volcanic eruptions because there is an asteroid that is set to hit Earth. Basically behind this asteroid hitting Earth, there's loads of government secrets that I can't get into because of spoilers. But the whole premise of this book centers around government secrets and the asteroid and it centers around these three characters one called Noah, one called Tak and one called Min and it turns out that Min and Noah are kind of subjects in a government testing facility so they're just trying to figure out what happens to them every two years on their birthday because every two years they get killed by a man in a black suit and after they have been killed they wake up they're not harmed in any way they're just 
look perfectly fine and then they just have to go back home and pretend that nothing's happened and the blurb says it's been happening since min was eight every two years on her birthday she is murdered by the same man in cold blood but hours later she wakes up in a clearing just outside of her hometown alone unhurt and with all the evidence of the crime erased Across the valley, Noah just wants to be like everyone else, but he's not. Nightmares of murder and death plague him too, though he does his best to hide the signs. And as the world around them begins to spiral towards panic and destruction, the two troubled teens discover that people have been lying to them their whole lives. So, I just... Oh. I love this book so much and so as soon as I finished Nemesis I went on to Genesis and this oh my god I can't talk about this book without giving away spoilers so I'm really sorry about that but I gave this book a 5 out of 5 again because just oh my god it was insane there is just it's crazy so it follows straight after the ending of nemesis so it's like literally five seconds later all hell breaks loose and there's murder and there's great character development for noah and min there's brilliant character development for other characters we have characters die so get your heart ready to be broken and it's just pfft, an insane emotional roller coaster that I couldn't stop reading. There has to be a third book. There has to be. I actually emailed the person who I was corresponding with from Pam McMillan to say, look, is there going to be a third book? I need to talk to Brendan about there being a third book because there has to be, because the cliffhanger was just insane and oh my god. So yeah, if you haven't read these two books already, I thoroughly, thoroughly urge you to get round to them because these, oh my god, this is probably one of my favourite series of all time. So definitely check out Nemesis and then read Genesis. Okay, so this is the last physical copy that I read in May and that is Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman and this is actually another reread for me. I read this as soon as it came out but my book club that I go to at my local Waterstones, they were reading this as their book of the month because they loved Scythe so much and because I wanted the book to be fresh in my mind, I decided to reread Thunderhead. Um, I did give Scythe a 5 out of 5 and I gave Thunderhead a 5 out of 5 as well because I did actually think that Thunderhead was slightly better than Scythe. If you don't know what Scythe is about, it is about basically a world where all human diseases have been cured so no one dies death has been cured people are immortal and to keep the population down there are these people called scythes who are tasked to go around and kill people but yeah they have to keep the population down so these scythes they glean the people so obviously there's not too many people in the world. We follow the characters of Citra and Rowan who are taken under Scythe Faraday as Scythe apprentices. So they are learning to become Scythes, they have to undergo these trials and it's very political so there's a lot of political intrigue throughout this book. You have the bad Scythes, you have the good Scythes and it's just amazing. In the middle of all of this is a, I guess, can we call him a character? Why am I giving it a gender? What am I doing? So basically there's this thing called the Thunderhead, which is like a more advanced version of the cloud that we have. And it looks after humanity basically, so it just makes sure that humanity's okay and no one's depressed and you know, no one's psychotic and everything's fine, the world is just going according to plan. And in Thunderhead, the main character I guess is the Thunderhead because we learn more about its kind of train of thought and we learn about its feelings and it's just very very interesting to read from the Thunderhead's perspective and again this follows straight after the happenings of Scythe so if you haven't read Scythe obviously I'm not going to give any spoilers away but it does follow again the characters of Citra and Ron Rowan through obviously the Scythedom world and there's more politics, there's more death, there's just, oh my god, the ending, just, oh my god, like, it's like with Genesis, the ending blew me away, and there is a third book called The Toll that is coming out next year, but I need it 
right now because the ending of Thunderhead was just ridiculous, okay? I was reading it whilst I was in Holland, I was sat on my auntie's sofa and I was literally just like, oh my god, seriously? Thunderhead was another amazing reading experience for me and if you haven't read Scythe or Thunderhead yet, again, like Nemesis and Genesis, I thoroughly, thoroughly urge you to get around to them. So that's it for the physical copies that I have. And then obviously I said before I read three graphic novels. Okay, so the first graphic novel that I read was Shadow Man by Andy Diggle and this is volume one. Now I haven't read any kind of storyline to do with Shadow Man before so when I went into this volume I was a bit apprehensive because you know a lot of people were like oh my god it's like Shadow Man's back and I was like who? Who's that? Because I kind of thought that this was a graphic novel that you could go into without knowing what Shadow Man was or who he was. And a lot of people were saying that on Goodreads, they were saying, oh, you don't need to have read, you know, previous Shadow Man stories. But when I started Shadow Man, it kind of jumped straight into the action and I started thinking, hang on a second, am I missing something here? And um, for those of you who don't know who Shadow Man is or what happens, basically Shadow Man is a character called Jack Bodyface who was orphaned as a child. And he didn't know this, but Jack was fated to kind of be raised in this long lineage of people called Shadow Men, who are mortals who are bound to voodoo spirit magic and that basically safeguards Earth from different kind of realms. So it sounds very, very interesting and it sounds like a genre of... I'm being rang by my best friend. Three hours later. Okay, so I'm back from my day out with Layla and now I can continue filming. So I actually can't remember where I was. I was talking about Shadow Man, wasn't I? And I was saying how it felt like I had to have read Shadow Man, like previous Shadow Man volumes before I go into this one. The story was still interesting and I was still interested into the characters and everything but it did feel like you had to have some kind of back knowledge into the world of Shadow Man but story and confusingness aside the artwork was absolutely brilliant and I loved the sharp lines and the colour and it was just oh my god the artwork was absolutely gorgeous and definitely the type of artwork that I look for when um, kind of researching into graphic novels that I might enjoy. And another thing, I did receive this graphic novel from NetGalley, so I was reading it on my phone, and it seemed unfinished, so issue one and issue two, they had the colour, but then in issue three, it was like black and white and it had no speech bubbles or anything and it was just the drawings so I was getting really really confused I was like is it supposed to be like this but then after looking on Goodreads and looking at other reviews other reviews were saying the same thing so I think it was just kind of like a publishing format error that happened but the story was really interesting we got to see some really dark elements of voodoo magic but then the positives of it as well and Auntie Diggle does this amazing thing by bringing people of colour into the storyline focusing more on that and it was just it was an enjoyable read and I was hooked by the end of the story and I definitely did want to know more so isn't that what graphic novel is all about it entices you to carry on reading the different volumes so we shall see if I get the opportunity to read volume two then I will definitely be requesting that on NetGalley. The second graphic novel that I read that was also sent to me, well, that I requested on NetGalley was Letter 44, Volume 1, and this is by Chris Saul. And the thing that sold me to request this was the fact that it's a space exploration story with political intrigue kind of mixed in with it. So basically, there is this new president that is taking over the old president, and the old president has left the new president 
a message about this massive space exploration thing that's going on that no one knew about so this new president is now in charge of that and has to look after these astronauts while they're up in space and so it flips from the president's point of view to the people who are in space's point of view and from the people who are in space you see that they have found this kind of alien spaceship thing but they don't know what it is what it does if it's friendly if it's like the enemy they don't know so they board the ship to see what it's like and it's about their adventures when they're on the ship and also behind the scenes as well with the relationships between the astronauts and I really did enjoy this graphic novel I gave it a four out of five and I actually really really want to carry on reading this I think this is a graphic novel series that I'm going to end up physically buying because I just love sci-fi stuff I love space exploration and I love political intrigue so those are definitely things that I really enjoyed reading about and the third and final graphic novel that I read and also the last kind of book that I read in May was The Spectacle Volume 1 by Megan Rose Gedris and this is set in a carnival so what happens in this storyline is that and this is no spoilers because it happens at the very very beginning of the graphic novel it's set around these twin sisters and one of the twin sisters gets murdered and it's about the other sister kind of trying to figure out what's happened to her and you also see life behind the carnival and it's very kind of supernatural magical and the artwork is not something that I tend to go towards it kind of reminds me of the artwork of Lumberjanes and Nimona but it's not something I tend to go towards but I still really appreciated the art and it was actually very beautiful when I got used to it because I'm I'm more used to like the gritty dark elements of the art of graphic novels so it was different to experience this type of art um, overall I gave it a 3 out of 5 it was enjoyable there was just a few things where it kind of just fell flat for me the characters sort of they didn't have much development so I wasn't really invested in them I don't know whether that's just because it was the first volume um, and whether my investment in the characters will grow as the series goes on I don't know but yeah it kind of fell a bit flat for me which is why I gave it a 3 out of 5 but it was still an enjoyable read the mystery element to it was also very enjoyable as well and I did love the supernatural element to it those are all of the books that I read in May like I said I read nine in total I do like I said at the beginning of the video have a blog post version of my May wrap up as well so I will link that in the description box below along with all of the reviews that I have on my blog of the books that I've read so thank you guys for watching I know I stopped halfway to go and meet Layla but at least I finished filming the video um, if you liked this video please give it a big thumbs up if you've got any comments questions or feedback just leave it in the comments box below I do and I am trying to post videos on Mondays Tuesdays and Fridays with my reading vlogs being on the Mondays and then videos like this being on the Tuesdays and Fridays but like I said I do have a lot of personal family things going on at the moment so whether I stick to that schedule I have no idea so because of my iffy schedule if you want notifications for when all the videos go up just click on the bell icon below and you will receive a notification and yeah that is all I have left to say so thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video bye